Hey, hey Christian faith, faith kids. kids! Today we are going to focus on a story through the eyes of Jesus' most devout followers. What does devout mean? Great question. Devout means really loyal or faithful. Got it. Yes. So today we are going to be looking through the eyes of Jesus' most devout followers during the most amazing event in history. Oh my goodness. Is it my birthday? No, not, not quite. <laughs> Your birthday. No. Okay, our birthday. Not exactly, let, let me give you a hint. Do, do you remember the monthly focus? Yes, humility, which is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. Exactly, during this event, Jesus gave up what he deserved as the son of God for all of us. Any other guesses on this event? I got it. It's. Easter! It is Easter. Easter is an awesome time to talk about humility. Jesus went ahead and faced death. And not only did he face it, he defeated it. He triumphed over death. Jesus is alive. When night has fallen Fear is coming, still you're calling me in. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. Yeah, I've decided.
the story. It's always great to remember just how much Jesus loves us and everything he's done to sacrifice for us. I agree. So let's focus in and listen to the amazing sacrifice that Jesus made in today's Bible story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapters 18 through 20. For months, the Jewish religious leaders had been making plans to silence Jesus. The things he said and did challenged the way they had always lived. He was upsetting the world as they knew it. It is better if one man dies for the people than if the whole nation is destroyed. Then one of Jesus' closest friends, Judas, betrayed to the religious leaders where Jesus would be praying after the Passover meal. The leaders sent soldiers to arrest Jesus, and he allowed the mob to take him. Do you think I can't ask my father for help? He would send an army of angels. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. As Jesus was tied up and led away, Jesus' closest friends scattered, though Peter and John followed at a distance. What was it like for them? Try to imagine for a minute that you're Peter. Only hours before, Jesus told you. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. And you, Peter, protested that you would die before deserting. But now Jesus has been arrested. And if you get too close, they might take you too. So you trail along like a stray dog as soldiers haul Jesus inside the home of the high priest. What's happening in there? The servant at the door frowns as she peers at you. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? I am not. You're ashamed to lie, but what good will you be to Jesus if you get arrested too? You huddle close to the fire in the courtyard as voices float through a high up window. What's this foolishness you've been teaching? I didn't say anything in secret. Ask the people who heard me. They certainly know what I said. You feel sick. Now they've taken Jesus. You know nothing will stop them. Someone else asks whether you're one of Jesus' followers, and you snap. No, I'm not. Minutes later, another man asks whether he saw you in Gethsemane with Jesus. Your stomach churns. Nope, not me. You realize you have denied Jesus three times, just as he said, and all you can do is stagger to your feet and run away, weeping. Now, imagine you're John instead of Peter. Somewhere in the chaos, you've lost Peter. So when soldiers haul Jesus away to the Roman governor, all you can do is follow, alone. From the back of the crowd, you witness the terrible drama as the governor Pilate brings Jesus out. What charges are you bringing against this man? He has committed crimes. Pilate takes Jesus away for questioning. You can only pray that he sees through all the lies and stops this madness. You're horrified when Pilate brought Jesus out again, battered and bruised. I find no basis for a charge against him. No, crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate hands Jesus over to the soldiers who force him to carry the heavy beams of his own rough cross. You know where they are going. Golgotha. It's a hill outside the city. As in a bad dream, you force yourself to follow. Along the dusty road, you find Jesus' mother, Mary, her sister, and Mary Magdalene. None of you can speak. You arrive at Golgotha in time to see soldiers nail Jesus to the wooden bars with heavy spikes and raise the cross up high. You strain your eyes to read the sign placed above Jesus' head. King of the Jews. You nearly choke on dust and grit. You've seen Jesus do amazing, powerful things, and yet he's allowed himself to be taken and battered. 
You glance over and see Mary sobbing, so you place your hand on her shoulder. When you look back up, you see Jesus watching his mother through the pain in his eyes. Dear woman, here is your son. Jesus looks directly at you, eyes filled with love. Here is your mother. Yes, Lord. You are overwhelmed to know that Jesus trusts you to take care of his own mother. But the terrible truth sinks in. Jesus knows that he will die. He's planning on it, just as he's been saying for weeks. A short time later, you see him lift his gaze to heaven. It is finished. Then he bows his head, and you can see the life leave his body. All the air seems to leave your own lungs, too. You thought Jesus was God's chosen one. How could he be dead? Now, as we move ahead, imagine you're Mary Magdalene, one of Jesus' close followers. Unlike so many others, you've dared to stay there, at the cross. And once Jesus is dead, you dare to follow the men who take his body for burial, Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. A garden tomb. The evening has faded, and it's now the Sabbath. You want to honor Jesus by anointing his body with spices, but it will have to wait until the Sabbath is over. So you stay hidden indoors until early Sunday morning, then you make your way through the dark streets. The stone. What will I do about the stone? As you arrive, you recall that a heavy stone was rolled to block the entrance of the tomb, but now... It's gone! You gasp as you peer inside the tomb. Gray light reveals. <gasps> it's empty! Heart pounding, you race back through the streets to the home where the disciples are staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. You can see the shock in Peter's face. John gapes, and then they both begin to run to see for themselves. At a loss, you follow slowly, weighed down with exhaustion and confusion. When you reach the garden, you see Peter and John ahead, trying to make sense of it. You hang back as they leave again. What more is there to say? As the first rays of dawn light up the garden, you reach the tomb. Tears spill down your face as you bend to look inside once more. Two figures in radiant white sit where Jesus' body lay. You can't even begin to think what this means. Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away. I don't know where they've put him. You turn away to catch your breath and find another man standing right there. At first you think Peter or John has returned, but it's not one of them. Maybe it's a gardener. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him, then I will go and get him. Mary. The moment he speaks your name, you see, you understand. It's Jesus. Teacher. You fling yourself at his feet because there isn't anything else you can do. Gently, he touches your shoulder. Do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. You rise to your feet, still weeping, but your tears are full of joy. You start to run again because you can't wait one second more to deliver the news. I have seen the Lord. Jesus chose to face death for those he loved, and now he's defeated it. Jesus is alive. It's the best news ever for everyone across all time. Hey, John, I've got a question. What is it, Brandon? No, no, I'm asking the question. Fine, say the question. Why do we paint Easter eggs? Because it's easier than wallpapering them. Oh! <laughs> hey, did you hear the one about the lady whose house was infested with Easter eggs? I did, but she's fine now. You don't say. Yeah, she called an exterminator. <laughs> An exterminator! <laughs> Hey, that reminds me, how does the Easter Bunny stay so healthy? I'm guessing a steady diet of fresh greens and vegetables. That 
and exercise. <laughs> hey, speaking of the Easter Bunny, do you know how much he gets for every basket he makes? How much? Two points like everyone else. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. I think we're going to have to stop doing this pretty soon. Why, because the yolks are so bad? <laughs> ah. uh, no, I, I, I'm getting dizzy. I'm up, we're upside down. Oh. Uh, <sighs> I need air. <sighs> I need air. <sighs> I can't see. <laughs> Got to wipe off my glasses. <laughs> okay. Uh. 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 All right. Uh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Welcome to the so-and-so show. Happy Easter. I thought we were going to say that together. I'm so sorry. I just got excited. I, I understand. Like it is very exciting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anywho, we're excited because it's time for our annual Easter egg hunt. John and Brandon's annual Easter egg hunt. That's what I said. Every year, we hide one Easter egg somewhere in the world for someone to find. Mm -hmm. Seems impossible, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. No one has ever found the egg we've hidden. So this year... We tried to find someone so cunning, mm. so clever, mm. and so gifted at locating hidden objects, there was no chance they would fail. So please welcome someone who finds stuff. Greetings and saturations. I think you mean salutations. No, I wish. I'm sweating like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> It's hotter than the sun out here. Uh, why don't you tell everyone who you are? Oh, uh, my name is Leonard Fortescue, and I am a professional metal detectorist. But presently, I am a professional egg hunter. Oh, did you did you solve our last clue, Leonard? Oh, well, let's see here. <clears throat> <clears throat> We're four-sided and stand very tall. Perched in sand with no water at all. The tallest of us has been called great. Most think there's three, but there's really closer to 80 thereabouts. Kind of loses the rhyme a bit at the end. Poetry is hard. Yeah. What do you think, Leonard? Where are you now? Well, Four-sided, tall buildings in the sand? <laughs> I mean, where else would I be? <laughs> All right. Yes, well done, Leonard. Did you find our next clue? <laughs> you bet your gumdrops I did. <laughs> Old Camilla here, she found it buried in the sand right over there. Hang on. <clears throat> I share a name with this very day. If you hope to find me, I'm far out of the way. I sit all alone in a watery bed. I have no body, so look for the Part of the body that typically sits on top. Why not just say the head? I didn't want to make it too easy. It's the world biggest head of lettuce. <laughs> or maybe a giant wheel of head cheese. That's delicious. I think it's pretty straightforward. I, oh, oh, and you better hurry. Your time's almost up. Mm -hmm. Oh, sweet petunias. I got to get out of here. Uh, once I find my camel. Hey, Billy Bob! Uh, this could take a while. I agree completely. Mm -hmm. That's why we're going to play a little game I call Egg Smash. In front of us is a basket of a dozen beautifully dyed Easter eggs. We will each take turns smashing an egg on our own heads. How is this a game? It's a game of chance, my friend. Nine of these eggs are filled with confetti. The other three are raw. Oh. The first person to crack two raw eggs on their head Loses. You got it? I got it. After you. Thanks so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> nice! Ow. Confetti and pain. Woo. Your turn. Oh, great. What do you got? What do you got? Oh! oh it's a party in your head. It's a party. Ah. Good. Oh. Hey! Nice! Wow. <laughs> there we go. Red. Ooh. Whoa! What? I'm getting nervous. There's three yolks here. I know. <laughs> three and three and seven. What's it gonna be? Okay. Yeah. 
Oh! I think that's a strike one. How's that, that feel? That's great. That's all, right, great. all right, here we go. My turn. <laughs> oh! oh. Right, here we go. Ready? Here we go. Oh! <laughs> I think we have a winner. It's me. Boom! <laughs> I'm getting closer to your egg. I can almost taste it. I can taste it. I figured it out. I'm on Easter Island. <laughs> Look at that big head. Reminds me of my mama. You got there fast. Thank you. I did have a little problem in customs. They apparently don't like you to bring camels onto the island for some reason. Why did you bring... You know what, never mind. Did, did you find the last clue? Does a one-legged duck swim in a circle? <laughs> <clears throat> the last place to go is where you already know. Two sit here on their keister. Hurry up so we can celebrate Resurrection Day together. You've got egg on your face. Huh. <laughs> oh! Oh! I see what you did there! <laughs> this is the oldest trick in the treasure hunting book. <laughs> Watch out, egg! I'm coming for you! <laughs> uh, that way. <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen! Happy Easter, guys! Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, Kellen! Kellen. Today we're talking about the most amazing moment in history. Want to help me out? Yeah. You bet. Then bring on out the sound jars. Whoa! These jars contain sounds that will help tell the story. All you have to do is open the right jar at the right time. You think you can handle that? <laughs> yeah. Does this answer your question? <laughs> no, it does not. We're ready, Kellen. Perfect. Then here it is. The story of Easter. Jesus was the son of God. Jesus first came on the scene as a baby born in Bethlehem. <laughs> Jesus grew up. He grew wiser and stronger. Now, as a man, he devoted his life to teaching and serving people. They came in droves to hear his words and see his miracles. Ooh. But <gasps> even though Jesus had done nothing wrong, Many of the religious leaders wanted to get rid of him, so they had Jesus arrested. They tied him up, and he was taken to the high priest. Two of Jesus' disciples, Peter and John, followed at a distance, trying not to draw attention to themselves. But someone recognized Peter. You aren't one of Jesus' disciples, are you? Me? No, not me. Then someone else thought they recognized Peter. Aren't you one of Jesus' followers? No, you're mistaken. And then a third person. Haven't you been with Jesus? I'm telling you for the last time, I don't know him. Later, Jesus was taken to the Roman governor, Pilate, who decided... I find no basis for any charge against the man. But the religious leaders stirred up the angry crowd. Fearing a riot, Pilate handed Jesus over to the soldiers. They forced Jesus to drag the heavy beams of a wooden cross to the place where he would be crucified. The place called Golgotha, or the skull. There, they nailed Jesus to the cross. They raised the cross up, and Jesus hung there until he died. It is finished. That evening, Jesus' body was taken down from the cross and put into a cave-like tomb. A heavy, large stone was rolled over to block the entrance. It seemed like the end. All hope was lost. But the story wasn't over yet. Early Sunday morning, when it was still dark, a woman named Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. What she saw astonished her. That large, heavy stone that had blocked the tomb's entrance had been rolled away and Jesus' body was nowhere to be found. So Mary ran. She ran to tell Peter and John what she had discovered. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. Now it was their turn to run. 
They ran straight to the tomb. And Mary was right. The cloth used to wrap Jesus' body was still there. But Jesus, well, he was gone. They didn't understand what was happening. So they went back to where they were staying and left Mary there alone. She stood there and cried. But she had to see for herself one more time. So she peeked into the tomb and she saw two angels sitting where Jesus' body had been. They said, Why, Why are you crying? crying? They have taken my Lord away. I don't know where they have put him. Mary turned to find a man behind her. She thought it was the gardener. Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him, then I will go and get him. Mary. When he said her name, Mary recognized the man. It was Jesus. He was alive. Go to those who believe in me. Tell them I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary ran to deliver the news. I have seen the Lord. Jesus, God's son died on a cross, not because he had no choice. He chose to sacrifice himself to pay for our sins. He put us first in the most ultimate way. And on the third day, Jesus came back to life, proving that God is more powerful than death itself. And that is the story of Easter. Wow, I never get tired of hearing that story. Thanks, Kellen. And I never get tired of talking about the lengths God will go to to show how much he loves us. Happy Easter, Kellen. Happy Easter to you guys. Happy Easter, Brandon. Happy Easter, John. Yeah. Hey, reveal, reveal the question. Hey, what does Easter mean to you? Yeah. What do you love about Easter? How does it make you feel when you think about it? Talk about it together, and we'll see you next time. Wait, wait, wait. Um, wait. What about Leonard? Shouldn't we check in to see if he's found the hidden egg? Oh, yeah. I forgot about him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he'll find it. That's uh, what, it's yeah. what he does, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's all for the so-and-so show. Happy, Happy Easter! Easter! Long-eared Norwegian bunny's eyes. <laughs> I'm gonna go make me an orange omelet. <laughs> oh, got my egg. What a great story. And that question at the end: What does Easter mean mm -hmm. to you? What does Easter mean to you, Shanti? Mm. Easter for me is. Tasty food, and of course, Jesus. Tracy, what does Easter mean for you? You know, Easter is an opportunity for me to spend time with family. It's a good one. But the great thing is, my reason, your reason, doesn't have to be your reason. And that is the awesome part, is that it can be as simple as Jesus gave his life for you because he loved you so much. And this is a perfect opportunity for you kids to come bring your parents. And if you would like to ask Jesus to be a part of your life today, this is a great opportunity. There's gonna be a prayer that's gonna come up and you can say it with your parents. Which actually is a great lead into our bottom line for today. Yes. Our bottom line today is Jesus puts us first. Yes. And you know what? I have a great way for us to remember this. How? I have signs for each word so that you can practice or you can practice Yes. so you can show others the bottom line. Do you want to learn? I totally want to learn. All right. So Jesus, Jesus puts, puts us, us first. First. Exactly. Wow. That was so cool. What a great way to not only say the bottom line, but to do the bottom line. Absolutely. And do you remember the memory verse? Okay, so it's Philippians 2, 3, but I have to be quite honest with you. It's a little hard for me to say that memory verse because it's a little long, so I'm going to need some help. You know what? I've got a surprise for you. 
What is it? I have signs for the memory verse too. Let's go. All right, so do not. Do not. Do anything. Do anything. Just to. Just to. Get ahead. Get ahead. Yeah. Yes. All right, that's the first part. Now, verses are long. And again, if it takes a couple tries, that is okay. You can continue to learn it with us. So do not. Do not. Do anything. Do anything. Just to. Just to. Get ahead. Get ahead. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because you are proud. Because you are proud. Instead. Instead. Be humble. Be humble. Value. Value. Others. Others. More. More. Than yourself. Than yourself. Exactly. It's a great way to learn the memory verse, especially if memorizing words is a little difficult. You can do the signs with the words and you will know the memory verse in no time. <laughs> All right, Shanti, do you want to do it one more time? I would love to do it one more time. Awesome. Do not. Do not. Do anything. Do anything. Just to. Just to. Get ahead. Get ahead. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because you are proud. Because you are proud. Instead. Instead. Be humble. Be humble. Value. Value. Others. others. More, more. Than yourself. Than yourself. That's it. Now it's your turn. You can practice this at home, and then you can show people the memory verse as much as saying it. That's right. Once you feel confident, get a grown up to record you and post it online. Tag us on Instagram if you don't follow us already at CF underscore kids with a Z. That's a Z. Kids, this is a great opportunity for you to go ahead and ask Jesus to be a part of your life if you have not already. Go ahead and grab your parents and there's gonna be a prayer that's gonna come up shortly and you can say this together. That's right, grab a grown up and go through this prayer and talk about how you can make Jesus the leader of your life and the great things that he's done for you. <laughs> 